Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be bringing you window shopping with me essentially for wardrobe basics. So this morning I went to David Jones and I did a little bit of a browse around. I picked out a few things that kind of caught my attention that I wanted to try on and then I had a little trial session in the changing rooms and I'm going to share with you my thoughts, all the prices for everything, sizing, all those sorts of details, as well as kind of talk about what it was that drew me to those pieces in the first place. I thought what I would do a little bit differently this time with the description box is I am going to leave links for different retailers in different parts of the world. So so like UK, Europe, US, Australia, etc. So hopefully that should give you a little bit of variety if you want to go and check any of these brands out as well as information about the sizing and the price as well. But I'm going to talk through all of that throughout this video too. Now before we dive into things, I do just want to quickly warn you that a lot of these items fall on the more expensive end of the price spectrum. I didn't actually look at any of the price tags before I took these pieces into the fitting room, but I sort of jotted everything down. I think the most affordable item was 130, but the average price point was around the 350 to $400 mark. I was at David Jones, which is what I would consider more of a premium department store retailer. So that is part of the reason why these items are a little bit more expensive, but it also has to do with my own shopping habits as well. I tend to gravitate towards brands that are a little bit more of an investment. I do think that it is worth kind of spending a little bit more to get quality. While I don't think the two are always correlated, generally in my experience, you do get what you pay for. And as you know, I am quite happy to spend a little bit more on items that I'm going to be wearing on repeat and that are going to be part of my wardrobe for many many years to come. So let's start with the blazer because I think you know I'm a little bit obsessed with this tailoring piece at the moment and I made a beeline for Camilla and Mark. It's an Australian brand and they do tailoring very very well. They have a lot of I suppose really sophisticated items as well as more casual pieces as well particularly with their C&M range. So I grabbed a it's more of a is it a dog tooth? It's kind of a houndstooth check probably the best way to describe it blazer and it has such a cool detail to it so this one was a little bit more of a statement it had very very exaggerated sleeves that actually had this button-up detail so that they flared out and you could really amp that up and make it more of a statement if you wanted just by undoing them what I thought was really interesting with this blazer was actually the silhouette and the way that it was cut so it sort of nipped in at the waist and then flared out quite dramatically, which is really different to anything else that I own. I also thought that the toggle detail, which was how you actually buttoned it up at the waist, was very unusual. I haven't seen this on any other blazer. And I felt like it was more of a unique take on the classic round button shape, which I thought was really cool. The fabric was very textured and it almost had a pocket effect to it. It kind of looked like when fabric is starting to pull away from the lining but that was very intentional in this respect. It was actually more of a wool polyester mix, so not 100% wool, but it felt very, very heavy weight. The price tag on this was very high. It's $950. I think it was on offer actually for maybe as an after pay day or something like that, or click on frenzy. And I'm wearing this in a size eight. I think it fit pretty true to size actually, and I could probably put a medium weight sweater on underneath. The second thing that I tried on was for another Australian designer, this time by Lee Matthews. Now, I feel like her designs are just absolutely gorgeous. A lot of them are very dramatic and kind of exaggerated and there's a lot of volume and just a lot of fabric. I hadn't actually tried on anything from the brand before, but I've always kind of admired it from afar and this particular skirt had caught my eye. I think I've got it saved on my iconic wish list, <laughs> coincidentally. What I liked about this was that it had a really nice kind of almost uh, technical thick fabric. It reminded me a little bit of the Go Weave from Evelyn, but much thicker. And it had this contrast paneling around the waist. So the waistband was black, whereas the rest of the skirt was a midnight navy. This has a really beautiful bias cut. This was very, very long though. It's maxi length on me. So definitely a style that I would probably want to get taken up. The fabric content on this was 100% viscose. It didn't feel like any viscose I'd felt before. It was very, very thick and it did have a grain to the fabric. It was $399 and I'm wearing it in a size zero. And I assume a size zero in Lee Matthews sizing is the equivalent of an Australian six or a US two. On me, it was still a little bit big, so I did have to tie the waistband quite tightly. It was elasticated in the back as well. So I think that this would be a really good one if you wanted something that you could adjust, maybe if your weight fluctuates a little bit or you wanted to indulge one evening and you didn't want to be too constricted because it still felt very, very elegant and very modern. But that waistband detail, I think, just made it feel a little bit more relaxed. 
The next brand that I wanted to check out while I was in Deb Jones was Eula Johnson. This is a new brand to the store I believe because I've never seen it there before and it's one I've never actually seen in the flesh. I've always kind of admired it afar on Shopbop and a few other sites that I've seen it on and there's a particular top that I really love from the brand which I did share and post over on my blog. Maybe I'll link that down below. And I picked these two items based on the print. I kind of wanted to see how they would work with my skin tone and just sort of assess the quality of her items because they do tend to be a little bit more on the expensive end of the spectrum. So the first thing that I decided to try on was this absolutely beautiful yellow floral print dress. I thought that this would be a really lovely piece to wear for a wedding or I mean, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, any kind of spring summer event, it's just very elegant and it had such a lovely feminine fit to it. Details wise, the two shoulder straps were different. So one had a tie on it, which I thought was really special and unique. And the fabric had a gold thread running through it, which was just so gorgeous and really unexpected. You could only really see this up close. The fabric was more of a chiffon feel and when I checked the uh, actual fabric content it is a silk cotton mix which I thought was nice and it's lined and I thought it just had a really nice movement to it. I really love the ruffle detail. I'm wearing this in a size 2 and it was definitely too big for me. I've never tried this brand before so I'm starting to think that maybe they might run large just based on the other item that I tried. I am an Australian size 6 to 8 for reference, so that is a US 2 to 4, however I find when it comes to dresses and things like that, usually I will get an 8 just because I am a little bit larger around the hips, so I'm, I'm a pear shape. Anyway, the price tag on this one was just out of this, it was just really, really high. I would never buy this full price, it was $1,169, so I think that that is a lot to spend on a special occasion piece. I would rather actually just rent a dress like that for the evening. If it's something that you saw yourself wearing all the time, then I think by all means go for it. If you've got the budget to do so, go for it. But for me, it was just a little bit too expensive. The other item that I tried from Yula Johnson, which I'm not really going to be able to show you too well in the clips because it had that awkward security tag on it, but it was the most beautiful rich brown and burgundy shade so the top that I really love is in the same print and this one had more of a crisscross lattice effect detail at the neckline which was a little bit boho the whole dress was actually quite boho inspired with these huge voluminous sleeves that had an elasticated bit at the uh, ends of, at the wrists which was really nice because you could kind of push them up if you wanted to create a bit more volume and a bit more drama make it look a little bit more eccentric. I love the print on this so I think it's really really fun. This was 100% cotton and it was fully lined and I just kind of felt though that the style of it was a little bit too girly for me. It was sort of more of a baby doll style so you can kind of see that the seam for the skirt of the dress starts just under my bust or maybe an inch under my bust and I didn't really find that that particular silhouette was too flattering on me. I'm wearing this in a size zero, which was a good fit. It zipped up really nicely, and I think with all of the fabric, it worked really well. I feel as though this particular style would look really great on petites. I'm five foot eight, so I'm a bit taller. I feel if you were on the shorter end of the spectrum, you would look beautiful in this. This one was a little bit more reasonably priced. I think for a contemporary designer, I would definitely pay this. It's $430. And this is the sort of dress that felt a little bit more casual, something that you could wear all the time. I have seen in the windows at Dior some, a styling trick, which I really love, which is wearing a turtleneck that's a completely different color to the dress that you're wearing, with the sleeves kind of poking out the edges of your long sleeved dress. And I really love that. I think it's a really nice little combination and a great way to wear something like that, which maybe feels a little bit more transitional season or summer appropriate and make it winter appropriate. So that was Eula Johnson. Then I decided to try on a dress from Sandro. Sandro is a brand that I have bought stuff from in the past. I remember when Luke and I went to Europe together and we were in Paris, I took him to Sandro and I did buy a dress from there, which I really loved at the time. It had structured shoulders and the quality of it was really nice. It was a quilted material. So I went for a dress that I thought would be a really lovely work dress. The sizing on it I think is a little bit confusing so I went for a French 36 which is the equivalent of an Australian 8 or US 4 and it was too big on me and I will show you kind of how large it was at the waist. This had a zip up on the side so it was quite easy to get on and the detail I really loved about this was the fact that it had a zip detail at the neckline at the collar. So what you could do was you could have this zipped up the whole way or you could unzip it partially or unzip it the whole way if you really wanted maybe have a little lacy camisole or something on underneath. But I just thought that was a very cool detail, very unique and interesting and made it feel a little bit different. The fabric was really cool too. It had almost a flopped polka dot 
detail on the material which was really really subtle you could only see it when you were looking at it up close and then it had the smocked detailing around the waistband and also at the ends of the sleeves so the sleeves had a little bit of a balloon effect to them which gave them a bit of volume made it feel special again this one was 100% viscose and it was $385 so I think for a brand again a contemporary brand and a dress from a contemporary brand I would say that's probably a reasonable price you could probably get something similar maybe it won't have the same design details but from more affordable brands if that is out of your budget now high street brand that I feel like always does work with it really well is witchery and I love looking in their store I feel like they've always got some really great pieces that are good quality and a lot of the time you can get things from there on sale they always seem to have sales and I think if you are a loyalty member you can usually get a lot of great discounts too depending on how often you shop so I decided to try on this leopard print top from there I kind of just judged this based on what it looked like rather than what the fabric content was or how it felt because I love the print on this so it's leopard print but it's more of a rusty color and it's a really nice rich rust hue which I think is perfect for the autumn winter season which we're currently in here in Australia so this was 100% polyester it was a polyester chiffon and it didn't feel as cheap as other polyester chiffons that I have tried it is semi sheer and it came with a little slip underneath which I thought was great because it made it a little bit more modest otherwise you could just wear a little slip top of your own but I thought that was very handy you can probably see from the cutaways that you can see my necklaces through the fabrics so that should give you a bit of an idea as to how sheer it is without the slip this had slight puff sleeves which was such a cool design detail and I think it's such a big trend for the season ahead as well so a good way to kind of incorporate that into your outfit if you want with something that is really fun but I think also a piece that you could wear for years and they had that sort of blues on style so they nipped in at the wrist I would wear this type of top tucked in however what I did appreciate about it was the fact that it had a longer hemline and it had a curved hem which I think is a really flattering detail and it covered your bum as well so if it was something that you wanted to wear maybe as a tunic with some skinny jeans or with some leggings or something like that I feel like it would totally work I'm wearing this in the size 8 and it was a perfect oversized fit I wouldn't go any smaller so stick to your usual size and this was $130 now, uh, if you ask my opinion as to whether or not I pay $130 for that top, I would say no, which we do frequent sales. So I would probably wait for it to go on sale if that was something that you really liked. The next brand that I went to go and try something on from was Jack and Jack. And this is another really great Australian brand. Their cashmere is just divine. Every single time I go past their racks at David Jones, I always go over and have a little look at the cashmere. It's very, very expensive, which is why I haven't actually invested in one yet, but it feels so incredibly soft and luxurious. I decided to try on a trench jacket because why not? Not like I have enough trench coats. And this one I thought was a really nice color. It's not coming off true to color uh, on my video footage that I took, but it's a really kind of dark olive khaki green. I will make sure that I insert a photo so you can see the true color of it. This had a really oversized look to it, which I thought was very cool. It felt very Scandinavian, and that was kind of what drew me to the piece. It's a cotton polyester nylon mix, so it does make me think that the fabric is probably quite water resistant, so a good one if you're thinking you might get caught in the rain, although you won't have a hood. So you'd still need an umbrella, but I think that having items like that that are functional but also look chic and stylish is a really great way to build your wardrobe. And this was unlined, and the thing I thought was most unusual about this was the way that it did up. So it had a belt on the left-hand side, and then on the right-hand side there was a little loop. And I guess you just belted it through the loop and then had it worn loose, or maybe you could tie it in a knot. I'm not 100% sure because... It wasn't very clear, but I thought that was a bit unusual. Apologies, the uh, security tag on this one made it a little bit difficult to show you how the silhouette and how the jacket draped properly, but hopefully you get a good idea from the try-on clips. I thought this was very cool. This was $649, so quite expensive. Obviously, it's an outerwear piece for a more premium Australian designer, and I'm wearing it in the size 8, so it's designed to be worn quite oversized. You could kind of size down with this particular piece. Then I decided to try on a second trench coat because again, why not? I do love trench coats and I think they're an ultimate classic piece. I know some people don't love them, but for me, I think they're perfect. They are, you know, one of those quintessential Parisian style basics. And I tried on one from Vestire or Vestier. I'm not 100% sure how you pronounce the brand, but I have tried on one of their trench coats before. What drew me to this was actually the fabric. It's a textured cotton, which I thought felt really nice. And it actually felt like it had more of a raw effect to it, almost like the cotton hadn't been treated. And and that to me I think added a little bit of visual interest and made it feel a little bit more high-end 
The one thing that really brought this down, and I'm going to kind of talk about this a little bit more when I get to the price, was the lining. It was 100% polyester and I couldn't really understand why you would have this beautiful cotton trench coat and then have a polyester lining. It just kind of cheapened the whole thing, which was a bit of a disappointment because everything else about this trench coat was absolutely perfect. And I would say if you are looking for a trench coat that is cotton, I, this one will not be water resistant at all. But you wanted something that looked very elegant and very timeless and this is a good option otherwise. The other thing that I really loved about this trench was the contrasting belt which I thought was such a neat detail and I think actually based on the design of it that you could wear it either way if you didn't really want to have that being such a visible presence in your outfit um, and the fit of it was just really nice. It was very nice and relaxed and just kind of flowed very beautifully. I think I preferred it worn open than belted though just because of the way the fabric sat. I just think it made it have a little bit more room to kind of breathe and move when it was worn open. I'm wearing this in a size 8 and I would say it fits true to size for a relaxed fit. It's a lot smaller than the Jack and Jack one in terms of the sizing and it's got more of a regular fit I would say. The price of this though is $350. So you can probably see what I mean when I said earlier that the polyester lining really cheapened it. For $350 for a cotton trench like that that's not water resistant I would expect the lining to also be made from a natural fiber. So that was a bit of a letdown for that piece but otherwise I think from an aesthetic point of view, I thought it was really beautiful and the cotton was lovely. Then I tried on probably one of my favorites. So if you watch my five piece French wardrobe wishlist video, in it I said I was looking for some gray wool trousers and I wanted to get some that were a little bit more affordable. Uh, I'm quite happy to invest obviously, but if I could find some on the high street that were made of natural fibers and that's obviously a win just because it's less of a hit on my bank account. And I found a pair that really looked like they ticked all the boxes from Country Road and I was so excited to try these on. So these are a wool flannel trouser in a dark uh, almost salt and, salt and peppery kind of a grey hue and I feel like these are such a great fit so they've got that tapered peg leg style so they are slightly cropped as well they come up I would say maybe one and a half inches above my ankle which I personally like just because I do carry a lot of my height my torso and I've got shorter legs I've got a 28 inch inseam I've mentioned this quite a few times but it's very short considering I'm 172 centimeters tall and yeah, I just absolutely love these. I'm actually very tempted to purchase these ones. I did buy a secondhand pair from Stella McCartney, which I'm waiting to arrive. I think they're coming tomorrow. So I have a better sense then as to whether or not those are going to work for me. But I, I have a feeling the Stella ones might be a little bit too big. So I figured these would be a good option. The one thing I didn't like about these is that they have a polyester lining. Now the lining on this feels a lot nicer than the polyester lining in the Vestia trench. However, from my perspective, I prefer if it wasn't there. I felt like it was a little bit unnecessary and just added a bit of extra bulk to the trousers. I think if I were to buy these, I'd maybe consider taking them to a tailor just to get the lining cut out or just cutting it out myself. Maybe having a little bit of a test to see whether or not that fabric would um, irritate my skin. But that's probably what I would look at doing just because I don't really like polyester lining. It doesn't breathe and I just find it kind of sticks to you when you're getting really hot. Now, I tried these on in a size 4. Country red sizing is notorious for vanity sizing. It's a problem that I've mentioned before and I always find it a struggle to get my correct size whenever I'm shopping there. I find that also there can be a lot of variation in sizing. So I wear a 25 in jeans and I found the 4 was a perfect fit on me everywhere. They didn't fit too tight anywhere. I found that the uh, seams and everything set and lay flat. And I really like the little detail around the waistband where it had some stitching around, which hopefully you can see in the close-ups. But I thought that these were a really great piece and they were $180. Uh, what I did think was great was that they had 20% off. So that makes them around the $144 mark, I think, if I've done my mess correct. I thought it was pretty good. The next thing I tried on was another bottom and I tried on the skirt from Faithful. Uh, Faithful is an Australian brand again which I really like. I love the fact that a lot of this stuff is handmade in Bali and I think they use natural dyes as well which is really good so less chemicals going into the whole uh, manufacturing process and what I really loved about the skirt was how sunshiny and how happy it felt. I have seen someone else wear this and I just thought it looked absolutely gorgeous on them so I wanted to give it a go for myself and obviously when it comes to skirts and things I tend to be drawn to slightly asymmetrical hemlines and I really enjoy midi skirts. I just think that they are very I guess feminine and elegant in a way that is modest but doesn't feel modest if you know what I mean and I love the little ruffle detail around the hem. You can probably see from the trial clip 
just how sheer the skirt was. It was the one thing I noticed as soon as I tried it on. You can see my t-shirt through the skirt and you can also see the outline of my knickers which were nude and I wouldn't have expected to be able to see that. So this is definitely the kind of skirt that would require a slip underneath and that just kind of makes it a hard no for me because I feel like it's a little bit high maintenance. But aside from that, I felt like the style was really beautiful, floaty, feminine, perfect for spring, perfect for a summer holiday. Unfortunately, we're not going on one this year because we are saving up to buy a pool and also hopefully redo our kitchen next year. But if we were going away on a summer holiday in the middle of winter, then it's definitely the kind of piece that I would love to have, despite that whole lining sheer issue. I tried this on in the Australian size 6 and I felt like it fit me really well. It was a little bit hard because they have one of those dye tags at the back which was right where the actual waistband was. I don't know why they put it up that high and made it a little bit awkward so it kind of dug in but I liked the fact that it had this really long belt that you tied around the waist so I thought that looked very nice and this was $170. So. Faithful does tend to be a little bit more expensive. It's more of a sustainable brand. They do use uh, rayon a lot, which I think I've mentioned this before, but rayon does have a tendency to shrink when you wash it. So do keep that in mind if you buy anything that is made from rayon. But yeah, beautiful piece, but a little bit too sheer. Then the last thing that I tried on, well, actually it wasn't the last piece, but the very last piece I tried on, a dress from Shona Joy, was a complete fail. It looked absolutely dreadful. The proportions were all wrong on me. I just... It wasn't something that you wanted to see. Maybe I should have filmed it, but it was just completely wrong on so many levels. I'm gonna to link to the brand down below because she actually does loads of gorgeous pieces. I just think that dress was wrong for me. I tried on the dress from Marge, or is it Maya? One of my friends told me it was Maya, but I've always heard girls pronounce it as Marge. So please discuss in the comments below because I'm so curious. This is a brand that I think I got the most requests to go and try on and I have tried things from Marge before. I think I've got something from Marge in my wardrobe or maybe uh, my shoes. I've got a pair of shoes from Marge I think, which I really love. <laughs> and I actually found it a little bit overwhelming to go through all of the styles and the dress that I decided to try on was a lot feminine and a lot more girly than I would generally go for but I really love the fabric so I thought I would just give it a go and it just felt like such a premium luxury piece when I tried it on. So I'm just going to tell you the price straight away. It's $610 and I'm wearing the size 1 which I was told was an AU 6 to 8 and I feel like this is a really fun piece if your style is quite girly and quite feminine. I loved the long sleeves and how it crossed over in the front. I thought that was very beautiful and then it nipped it at the waist with this full A-line skirt. It did come with a slip as well. However, I found it kind of awkward because the slip was quite long. You can kind of see it poking out the bottom of the dress, but then if you adjusted the straps on it, you would have been able to see the slip through the bust area. So you probably have to get that taken up or maybe it's intentional. I'm not 100% sure. Either way, I mean, it was a look and I didn't entirely mind that. I think kind of added something else to the dress, but the fabric was just the most gorgeous thing. So it was a broderie anglais, but it was a very thick structured cotton and it had these little holes throughout it, which you might be able to see from the close up. And the print was divine. It was a little daisy floral print, which I thought was so pretty. And the kind of thing that you could easily wear during the winter as well, just with some black stockings. I think if you switched out the white slip for a black one, you could make this a winter appropriate dress pretty easily, even just wearing a little turtleneck underneath, which I thought was really nice. But it was just such a gorgeous dress. Um, I think very, very fun. Not necessarily very me, but Marge is a brand that I look at and it's one that I do look at when I'm shopping pre-loved as well. I just think they've got some beautiful styles, some really nice classic pieces. It's, I believe it's a French brand if memory serves me. Uh, and yeah, I think it's one that tends to have a little bit more fun where I think that Sandro is a little bit more, I would say edgy and cool. I think that Marge is a bit more feminine and fun. That's probably the way that I would, I guess, differentiate between the two. So there you have it. That is everything that I tried on during my little window shopping trip today. I hope that you enjoyed it. Obviously, I didn't come home with anything because, you know, I am trying to be a lot more intentional about what I do buy. And I like to kind of mold things over a little bit as well. But it was really fun to go in, try things on, try out some brands that I'm maybe not that familiar with and get a bit of a sense of the quality of the pieces. And I'd love to know what your favorite item was that I tried on. If there's any other brands that you'd maybe like me to go and do this sort of shopping experience with, 
leave them in the comment section below because I really enjoy doing these videos and I think it's a really fun way to kind of I guess show you some other different styles that I don't actually have in my wardrobe and maybe just break out of my comfort zone a little bit. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've been enjoying Everyday May. I've had so many videos and so many of you lovely ladies have been commenting every single day and I read them all. Obviously I reply to them all but I just want to thank you so much because it really just makes my day when I see those comments and I love being able to connect with you and engage with you um, I guess on a more uh, frequent level than usual. Anyway I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video. See you then. Bye!